One of the questions we get asked quite often is what, why are your heads so much different, meaning more money than heads that you find in some of the warehouses. Well, the warehouses really do a nice job as far as selling an inexpensive cylinder head. It's just kind of put together. There's no real machine work uh, done to the cylinder heads, and there's not a lot of attention to detail paid on the parts. So you got to be careful when you buy things uh, from the warehouse. So we have a warehouse head here. The customer brought this head in. It was, I believe, it was bought from either Summit or Speedway or Jigs or whatever. And it's about a $450 head complete. And we're going to take it apart and we're going to show you how this head varies from our cylinder head. We're not going to talk about the porting work that would be done to our head to enhance your performance, 15, 20 horsepower. We're just going to talk about the mechanical aspects of the cylinder head and the parts. Well, the first thing we see in this, in this warehouse cylinder head are the valve springs. The valve springs are a relatively inexpensive inch and a quarter spring, which is what you would expect. But the issue with, these, with the retainer is the retainer doesn't fit the spring. So this, this retainer actually is about 100,000 smaller than the, the inside diameter of the valve spring. What it's going to do is it's going to create some instability. It's going to wiggle around. Uh, I'm going to cause per, perhaps some durability issues. Uh, when we get into our setup, you'll see that the retainer fits the spring uh, really nicely. Really no excuse for having a retainer not fit the spring. I mean, you got to buy the retainer anyway, so why not get the retainer that's going to be the, the, the correct size. The next thing that we see on, on the warehouse heads is, is this, the, the locks are stamped. They're not machined. Um, if you don't know a lot about locks, it's be hard to pick up on that. Now, the next major thing we see on the warehouse heads is that there's no spring hardened locator on the bottom of the spring. So there's nothing underneath the spring to keep the sharp edges from the dampener and the spring itself from tearing up the cylinder head. Now this spring locates fairly well on the bottom against the chimney, but what's going to happen is as the spring rotates, it's going to start to tear up that chimney and where do those chips go? All those chips are going to go into your oil. The next thing we see is there's no machining on the um, chimney. Uh, for any type of a performance valve seal, it's just an umbrella seal, which is probably okay for most race applications and all street applications. So when we went ahead and we measured the installed height of the springs, well here again, there's just no machining, there's no attention to detail on these heads, they're just put together. Uh, the intake uh, installed, installed height was 1.780, the exhaust was 1.750, the springs are set up about 90 pounds on the seat and about 260 pounds open. That's just not adequate for any type of a racing application. Okay. So other than the valve train items, uh, the valves uh, in these heads uh, really are okay. I mean, I don't know what manufacturer they are. Uh, the only issues that we have with them is that there's no back cut on the valve. If, if the bat valve did have a little bit of a back cut, it would flow a little bit better. But again, there's no machining done to these heads whatsoever. The other thing I see with the valve is it is a neck down stem valve. Now, we don't use neck down stem valves. Number one, the neck down stem doesn't necessarily flow any more air. Number two, the neck down stems are illegal for some racetracks say no neck down stems, so this could get you in a little bit of trouble. From an airflow standpoint, there is some information on our website under cylinder head resources and then uh, technical data. Uh, there's a, a series of uh, flow tests that we conducted on neck down stem valves versus non neck down stems. And the other machining that isn't done on these particular heads is there, there, there is no valve job done to the cylinder head. So, so, there's, so there's no machining at all you know, done to the valve seats. Of course, you wouldn't really expect it for that price. And the push rod holes uh, are not open, so you can't run guide plates on here. So if you want to run guide plates, you'd have to open those up. Uh, these come with um, some type of off-brand uh, screw installed in a washer, which is fine if you don't need guide plates. And there's no surfacing done to the cylinder heads. So these things could be anywhere from 76 to 79 cc's. We really don't know. Oh, well, excuse me, these are the Engine Quest CA350i cylinder heads, which are real popular for a lot of tracks on the country with soda, you know, CA, 
uh, some some other yeah, some other places uh, real popular head cylinder head for us uh, to modify. So that's about what you're going to get, you know, for for your money. You're about nine hundred dollars a set, I would imagine. And again, there's no machining, no attention to detail, and the parts are pretty questionable for a race application. So uh, when we come back, we're going to go ahead and compare this particular head uh, to one of our cylinder heads and, and show you what we do as far as machining. Uh, on our sonder heads.